Good evening. It's back to school week for our MPs and it already feels like the summer break never really happened. They've certainly hit the ground running with yet more Brexit disagreement and an election is almost guaranteed before Christmas. So up for discussion tonight. Unlike the North East Somerset MP, the government isn't taking a bid to block a no deal lying down. So what next for Brexit? With an election on the cards, voters in the marginal seats of St Ives and Cheltenham have their say on what next. And West Country schools are to get more cash, but does it add up to enough? Joining me for tonight's West Country debate, we have the West, uh, the Bristol West MP, Labour's Thangham Debonair, Bath's MP, Liberal Democrat Vera Hobhouse, and the Farming and Fishing Minister, the Camborne and Red Ruth MP, George Eustace. Good evening to you all. Well, let's start with Brexit. Deal or no deal? That is the question. It is one that's rumbled on for a few years now, but it finally feels like it's coming to a head. This week, MPs have voted to force the PM to request an extension to our departure date if he isn't able to secure a deal in October. Now, George Eustace, let's start with you. Your Prime Minister's not happy with that. You're not happy with that. What's the problem? Because you want a deal. We do want a deal, yes, um, but the way you get a deal is by being united as a country and going out and setting out um, the type of deal you want. And the truth is that Parliament's voted against the withdrawal agreement three times. Uh, all of the parties, including the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats, said they had problems with the so-called backstop. The Prime Minister has been very reasonable and said to the European Union, that's anti-democratic, our Parliament can't accept it, you have to take the backstop out. And what doesn't help uh, is having Parliament effectively trying to undermine uh, the government, because the European Union will never behave sensibly uh, on this issue while they think that Parliament will betray the referendum result, cancel the referendum result uh, and try to keep us in the European Union. Uh, Boris Johnson, thank you, has called this a surrender bill, Jeremy Corbyn's surrender bill. D do you agree with him and does George have a point there? I think it's extraordinary that many people in the Tory party, in the government especially, seem to be thinking that this is something that the European Union is doing to us, just to get on our nerves. It's the UK government that's trying to come up with, not, sorry, trying to come up with solutions with the backstop. They've said that there are solutions and we don't know what they are. They've said that we are going to be prorogued next week and we still don't know what it is that Boris Johnson is actually going to take. So it's not the European Union's problem to come up with a solution, it's actually the government's and the government hasn't come up with one. And this isn't a business negotiation, this is a withdrawal from a series of agreements which we were leading players in. We're the ones who are apparently choosing to leave, although I do not want us to leave, and we're the ones who are actually saying in, the, in our parties, the opposition parties working together, Vera's party and mine and the others, all we've said to the Prime Minister, all we've said is that if you can't get a deal through Parliament, no, we will not allow you just simply to crash us out. That doesn't stop him from telling us or the European Union what it is he wants. Well, and as the European to... Union said last night that actually there were no offers on the table from the government. Yeah. I think there's actually also a strange narrative that comes out of the Conservative Party, A, that actually the European Union is going to be put under pressure by a threat of no deal. I mean, that has been negotiating tactics. But there tactics. are some European Union businesses, but, for example, that are worried about a no deal. Ne ne negotiating tactics that in the last three years have not worked, and why should they suddenly work at the very 11th hour? And also... Well, they've not uh, worked uh, because Parliament's uh, been uh, hasn't, the it, ha it, has, it hasn't worked as a negotiating tactics. It's a complete rubbish tactics. But also, and this narrative that na a no deal Brexit would finally put um, a line under all the Brexit um, hoo-ha that we had in the last three years is absolute nonsense because we are only at the very very beginning because we're not suddenly sailing off into the ocean we are living in a global world where we have to work together in fact no deal Brexit is probably the worst of all worlds in order to sort of keep going with Brexit um, uh, uh, discussions negotiations anger the best thing that we can do to Brexit is actually stay in the European Union and then all these discussions would be over tomorrow. But they have. The other parties had their opportunity to do that. The Prime Minister's last night said, let's have uh, a, a, a general election, that general election to take place on the 15th of October. That would give a new Jeremy Corbyn uh, government the opportunity 
to seek that delay. Uh, it would give a Lib Dem government well, the opportunity to revoke what? Brexit would that not be a second and referendum? That could, be, uh, that could be done, but they turned that down. So we have a parliament at the moment that's refusing to respect the that's referendum results like and what? refusing, so to, refusing, to, get, refusing to even go to the country to allow the country to decide that's who they want to be the prime get, minister at this critical juncture. comes to you first. Yeah. It, would yeah. that not in essence be the second referendum you want? Because each party would have its own policy on Brexit. Yes. But first of all, we do not trust the prime minister for good, for reason. good reasons. Um, um, and we are worried that actually he says now uh, uh, 15th of October but then he's got all the options um, that a prime minister has to actually set the date at a, at, a, at a later date and we would crash out of the European Union on the 31st of um, October automatically and that is what this bill was all about we wanted to make sure we do not crash out but after the 31st of October after the prime ministers had an opportunity to come back with a new deal let's have that general election we are ready for it well, we will I mean, do there's well. a reason why we don't trust this prime minister it's astonishing we are barely on our third day of parliamentary session under this prime minister he's lost all of his votes every single one he's lost cabinet ministers sorry he's lost ex-cabinet ministers by sacking them from his own party his brother 21, has quit today 21 of the most respected Tory members who've got cross-party respect but Churchill's grandson his own brother has now resigned from the cabinet and from a being a Tory MP is it any wonder that we the opposition parties don't trust the Prime Minister his own party doesn't trust him but and the one of those MPs now made clear that so this, this bill is likely to now pass and probably pass uh, early next week yep. uh, then the challenge of the, the parties is once they've got their bill then why not have that election prior to the uh, we... prior to the um, end of October now at the moment um, the Labour Party seem to be moving the goalposts again and saying we still don't want an election. We want because to we frustrate still don't trust the Prime Minister. And we're going to move you, on you, to an election in a minute. But I just want to come back to the, the, the MPs, some of the MPs that Thang Dem there mentioned, the West Dorset MP, Sol Letwin, which at one point was David Cameron's right hand man mm. to an extent. He's now out of the party. Is this the right party for you when people who've served the country, served the party for decades in some cases? can be kicked out because of one rebel vote. Well, look, this is a major issue, a massive constitutional issue about whether or not there's any credibility left uh, in our democracy. It's the first time in our history uh, that we uh, appear uh, through Parliament to be ignoring uh, an election result. We've never done that before. I have a huge amount of time for Oliver Letwin. Uh, he's a friend of mine. And to, uh, to be fair, he's somebody who's been striving to achieve compromise throughout these uh, uh, last three years, as have I. Uh, but what um, I think we... Uh, coming to you now is a moment of truth, which is if Parliament will not compromise because there's a faction in Parliament that wants to cancel the referendum and ignore it and keep us tied into the European Union, they're not interested in compromise, then we have to um, be willing to um, uh, walk the walk and actually leave the European Union. No what we cannot have going into a general election, though, uh, is um, uh, some of our party members taking a position that is directly contrary to that adopted by That's the Conservative Party on such you, a major uh, issue. Your Prime Minister rebelled against the previous Prime Minister on more than one we occasion. Cannot go in into a, uh, we cannot months. go into a general election having people like this Philip Hammond undermining our, our your position. Party. So you don't, it's if extraordinary. there is a general election, and we're going to come on to that more in a moment, but if there's a general election and Philip Hammond is not the, for example, is not the candidate in his constituency, there is another Conservative candidate, that's the right thing. I think the, the reality is once you withdraw uh, the whip, those um, candidates can't stand in an election. And I understand well, that some can. of the... They, 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 can. Can. they, they, they cannot stand, yeah, but they they can't can't stand for, for the Conservative, the Conservative Party. Conservative. And the Conservative associations are in the process of selecting. I know it's difficult, and look, many of these are friends. I uh, have a lot of time for them, particularly uh, Sir Oliver Letwin. But you know, this is a major constitutional crisis because we've never in our history ignored a referendum this result before. Just, we've never passed a bill that, like Parliament... Urging, and as has been said by one of your colleagues, Alistair Burt, yesterday, wait who's going to be next. Parliament if you is, were treated like this, I'm sure you wouldn't love your party as Parliament much is as trying, you do currently. Parliament is currently trying to pass a bill that forces the British government to do exactly what no the European Union thing. says. Just really on the bill, and that is not it does I read no it. such thing. It does. It's it does an extraordinary no bill. It requires it no the government to accept thing. anything offered it by the European Union. Just what we've got you here, George, in your ministerial role, of course, you're back in the government now looking after fishing and farming heavily involved in some of these no-deal preparations. When I interviewed Boris Johnson in Turkey a few weeks ago, he couldn't confirm that some farms wouldn't go under in a no-deal scenario. 
Are you more confident than your Prime Minister seemed? Uh, I'm confident because I've been doing a lot of work on um, no deal planning. There are particular sectors that might be affected. So in Northern Ireland, the dairy sector exports about 35% of its milk. So we are looking at interventions we would make to support farmer incomes there. And in particular, the sheep sector exports around 30% uh, of its product to the European Union if the EU apply full tariffs. Uh, there is a um, that will have an impact on that trade. And the prediction is that prices on lamb may go back to roughly where they were in 2015. And the government's therefore already designing a headage payment to uh, offset that uh, impact and support farms incomes. For how long? So you're confident and for how long? And you're confident that if there is a no deal Brexit, and we, let's not go back into all of that, <laughs> yes. um, you're confident that there is the support they needed for farms yes. that would struggle. Can, can yes, just... uh, the Royal Payments Agency have already been instructed to design the administrative uh, processes needed for that. That's uh, well underway. The Treasury have set aside uh, money to deal with uh, a range of uh, such uh, interventions, and that was in the spending review. Uh, and yes, we will intervene wherever it's necessary to ensure uh, the producers that are affected by, uh, you know, what would be a rather hostile act by the European Union, putting on tariffs of that uh, sort again, of scale, that I... they would, uh, we would support those producers until. A free trade agreement. Do you understand standing? the World Trade Organization rules, George? Because you know that the European Union, as a member of the WTO, has to apply tariffs according to the WTO tariff regime. Yes. You know that. I know it that. has to apply them to third countries. And and it's if open if to the United under. Kingdom decides to leave, which I deeply regret and do not want, if they decide to leave the European Union, it's not like the European Union is being hostile. It's merely applying the rules to a country which has chosen to leave it. The and EU that's on an you the, um, to uh, sort out the sheep it is, farm. It is, we, we're bound by the same rules, it, but let's just be clear. There, there is an option under WTO for any country. Only if the negotiation is in place. Right. No, 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 that's not what I'm making. Well, let George answer briefly and then bring you, you in, Vera, the, the and then we're going to move is, on. Uh, the options are to have lower applied tariffs than the bound tariff, to have tariff rate suspensions, and, have you and to create that? 80... You don't need to negotiate that. That's something that unilaterally the EU it. can do. It's something that we are unilaterally doing in the schedules we've published. So it is open to the European Union, uh, should you they think that's sensible. WTO WTO to, no, it's not breaking WTO rules, I can assure you. They can set what's called an ATQ, an autonomous tariff rate quota, that would allow tariff-free trade in lambs uh, to continue into the European Union, and that would give us an option uh, to continue to supply tariff-free. Okay. As we will on the, sectors like barley and wheat, where there is already... So uh, I would, right, very briefly, Vera, and then we're going to so move on. So the way this government, this new government, has set out, I don't think the European Union um, is going to be likely to give a lot of things, because um, the way negotiations have been held by this government has been as atrocious. In fact, they have stopped most negotiating teams. So I don't think the EU is, would be, and quite um, understandably, and um, that minded to well, give it, give the UK government something and, and, and your position has always been we the UK can actually dictate terms. What nonsense is that? We have decided to leave the European Union. We are actually not in a position to set a lot of terms. We've decided to suspend some tariffs in order to keep stable consumer prices. Now if the EU do apply full tariffs on lamb, the price of lamb in the EU will rise by around 20%. So it is in the interest of European consumers for them not to choose to apply those tariffs and they have perfectly legal ways to do so which are uh, well used even used by the EU and many other right we're going to move on well. I'm sorry to you interrupt we are now well. going to move on to, to discuss we've already touched on a general election of course it's been a very busy week here's a quick reminder on Tuesday, enough MPs voted to take control of the Commons order paper, all to try and stop a no-deal Brexit. That meant yesterday the government tabled a motion which essentially triggered a vote for a general election. Now, there must be at least 25 working days between Parliament being dissolved and an election being held. The date Downing Street wants is Tuesday the 15th of October, the first time since 1931 an election will not have been held on a Thursday. That would be just two days before the European Council meeting of EU leaders on October the 17th, and a little more than two weeks until we're set to leave the EU. Now, of course, as we've already discussed, your party, you voted against it, you abstained. Obviously, the Conservatives wanted to have that general election. Vera, let's start with you. The Liberal Democrats, you've got a few more MPs. You've got Sarah Wollaston now down in, Totne in Totnes, uh, for example. You talk about the West Country being your heartland. If this general election does come, will we see that the Lib Dem MPs coming back 
in the West Country? Well, we are definitely very election ready. Um, we are seeing a dangerous shift, um, particularly to the right in the Conservative Party, but um, we also see a sh shift um, to the left in the Labour Party and the liberal middle tolerant ground is falling out of um, British politics. And we see um, M MPs coming to us. We're seeing many, many new members um, in our parties. So actually, we are a natural home for a lot of people now. And so we are very, very happy to have an election, bring it on. Um, we we are prepared and we, we prepare for making good substantial so, gains. So the reason why we did not vote uh, yesterday um, for an election on the 15th of October, I've already mentioned it, the Prime Minister says he wants to bring back a deal and negotiate with the European Union. It is absolutely important that we give the Prime Minister actually um, the time and the space and if we had an election during that time he actually couldn't negotiate. I want to see this magic new deal coming out of the European Union with the Prime Minister and wait to see what he brings so back. So when would you vote for a general election? Let's wait and see what happens um, so um, to the end of October. So even if this legislation goes through, it's in the Lords at the moment and all that sort of yes, stuff, um, you I, could vote for a general election next week? We are, I'm, I want to see the Prime Minister bring back his deal with the European Union that he has promised to the people in this country. Um, the Council is on the 17th of October, as I understand it. Yeah. So, um, so anything, after then, that's when you'll consider it. Anything that happens at the end of October, we look at okay. it again, but we've got time to see what the Prime Minister, he keeps saying it, he wants to negotiate, he doesn't want a no-deal Brexit. Let's hold him to his word. He wants a new deal. I would like to see that new deal. You Thank you, Devonet. We'll come to you now. You've got the largest majority in the West Country at the moment, but that doesn't necessarily mean any seat is particularly no. stable. When would you vote for a general election? Well, this week I think we've seen um, yet again how politics can move at a rapid pace and the thing that you thought was important in the morning has kind of disappeared from your mm. mind by the evening. I've already forgotten which Tory MPs yesterday said they were resigning or got kicked out because so much has happened since then. And in that environment it's very difficult to say that we would vote for a general election as we, 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 we did not yesterday um, because we're in such uncertain times. I think it's important that we put the national interest first. My constituents want me to put the country before party and they've told me very, very firmly that they want the Brexit mess sorting out before they want an election. Now, a lot of my constituents do also want to change a government, as do I. But we're not there yet. We haven't got out of the chaos. Well, let's very quickly hear from some of your colleagues' constituents. If he does have a general election, I, I think he'll have a landslide. Positive. I've always voted Conservative and I think this time I would have to think long and hard as to whether or not they were deserving of my vote. I'd take anything over what we're going through at the moment and the sooner we get rid of the Tories the better as far as I'm concerned. We just want out really, we just want out and I think um, by delaying all we're telling the EU is we don't really know what we want. I'd like a definitive decision to be made because either way whether it's positive or negative, in my opinion, um, at least we're being productive because this is just getting stale. He might be the shortest prime minister we got, and the, the worst thing that could possibly happen at the end was Corbyn. All this pussyfooting around is just a waste of time. We're going to end up leaving anyway. You know, we've had enough. As people, I voted out. To me, it should be what the people want not what the politicians want. With the lies that were told around Brexit, maybe we should be given a second choice to make sure that the final result is completely democratic. Not so much angry, just fed up, shall I say. Just fed up, because I don't think any of them know what they're doing, to be honest, and I can't see um, Boris Johnson lasting very long. We voted out, we voted out three years ago with an overwhelming majority, we should be out, not mucking about. Boris Johnson's got the right idea, get out now. If it's no deal, no deal. Better than nothing. George Jesus, so the Conservatives have a fairly strong grip on the West Country in terms of Westminster representation, but there are threats now from the Liberal Democrats in a number of seats, particularly in Cornwall, and also well, from Labour and the Brexit Party too. How worried are you? Well, I think there's a more important point here, which is at the moment uh, we've got a parliament that is refusing to honour the referendum result, in my view. We've not implemented it. People are playing games uh, and trying to say they want to cancel the referendum result. But more than that, it's refusing to give people the choice of the government they want to sort this mess out. The Prime Minister has said, this is what I think should happen. Parliament stopped him uh, from doing it through this bill. And he's therefore saying, fine, let's have a general election. Prior to the fixed-term parliament that brought in recently, Prime Minister could just choose that and have a general election uh, when 
uh, it was clear that they couldn't command uh, the authority within Parliament. And at the moment, we have this situation uh, where MPs from other parties are neither respecting the referendum result nor allowing people to choose whether they want their alternative approach. All right, let's move on, because if there is proof that Brexit and elections have dominated this week is the fact that yesterday Sajid Javid made his Commons debut as Chancellor, announcing a host of new spending commitments. It focused on three main topics, the police, the NHS and education. Now, Sajid Javid has promised 20,000 more police officers for our forces. The NHS got the biggest share of the funds, with £6.2 billion bolstering its spending pot, including £99.9 .9 million uh, to build a new women's and children's hospital at the Royal Cornwall. While well, he also announced a £400 million investment for education for 16 to 19 year olds. So Sajid Javid has said that almost a third of primary schools here in the West Country will see funding per pupil rise to a minimum of 3750 next year, while two thirds of our secondary schools uh, will see a funding rise to a minimum of 5000 um, Let's hear from the schools minister. Very significant impact. We're increasing funding overall by something like four and a half billion pounds this year, and 60% of secondary schools in the southwest will benefit from Boris Johnson's pledge of a minimum of five thousand pounds per pupil uh, in secondary schools. So, 60% of schools in the southwest will benefit from that increase. Vera Hobas, Bath and North East Somerset is one of the counties, like Cornwall, that is underfunded compared to others. This is good news, isn't it? Well, it's quite laughable, really, because the very man who you've just seen there have, has refused time and time again in our debates to actually um, increase the funding. So suddenly there's a magic money tree, it seems. So let's just wait and see um, how that actually materialises. Um, I am very cautious, and so are actually many educators and head teachers, that this money will actually make it all the way through, particularly if we do Brexit without a deal, which hopefully we've stopped, because there's actually no Brexit windfall. There's the, the opposite. It will cost this country an enormous amount of money, Probably there will be no money left. Without going back to Brexit, George, is Cornwall doing particularly well yes. out of this? If there is that no deal or, or the money that is, is the money going to be there if Brexit yes, doesn't Yes, the money's there and it's set out in the spending review. And I think it's very important that we've got a new Prime Minister, a new government, a new Chancellor, crucially, who've taken a look at this. And, you know, uh, MPs, Conservative MPs have all been making the point that these are important areas. Uh, the NHS uh, does need more funds because the demands continue to grow. Uh, there has been an issue with schools, although the budget's been growing. It's not kept pace with some of their costs. And other areas like policing and FE have been under strain in recent years and so uh, a number of us myself included lots of other conservative MPs have been saying for some time that these are areas uh, where there is a pinch point which we need to address and I think it's very very reassuring that Boris Johnson has acted very swiftly uh, to deal with these problems that had stored up Can under the last government. Why the money was not there before and now it's suddenly there where's it coming from? Well we had uh, Philip Hammond as Chancellor who had a different approach to these things we now have a different Chancellor oh. a different Prime Minister who's oh. uh, sorting these issues out. And, uh, Jeremy Corbyn obviously promised more money into education you know, but you must be pleased with, with this. No request. I am not pleased with it. My schools in my constituency are really, really struggling and it doesn't look like we're going to get any of this. One of the reasons there's been a difference in funding per pupil is because of, of deprivation. My schools are, an awful lot of them are in areas of high deprivation, high special educational need. That's why they get more per pupil funding, but they're still under strain and we're not going to benefit. And I'm tempted to ask, as Mrs Merton, in Mrs Merton's style, what was it about the prospect of an oncoming general election that led the Chancellor to spray money at Tory marginal seats? Because that's what looks like it's happened. Is that very, very briefly, is that the case? Uh, it's the case that Boris Johnson has come in with a, a different agenda and he's been very clear, uh, consistently actually, so that uh, schools are important, that we need to do more to address these issues uh, like other but MPs. My he's been, been picking up some of the, the pressures on the budgets on police so and he's, he's chosen priorities. It's a new government with a new set of uh, priorities and he's put his money where his mouth is. Right, we must finish it there. I think if there is a general election, which is almost certain, we'll be having these debates for a good few weeks, but that is all that we have time for this evening. Good night.